Okay. The morning after starts off quiet. Even the whole of Salem Well residence seems unusually still. The open hallway, when I step out, is devoid of tenants, no sounds coming from the other units either. It's almost as if something's brewing on the horizon. A peaceful night's sleep still does wonders for the mood, though. I can't even remember the last time I've slept without it. anything urgent interrupting. It's a nice break from all the bad news lately. If it wasn't for the insistent buzzing in my pocket waking me up, I'd sleep in. The ringing has stopped before I could move somewhere private, but sleep has also been effectively kicked out of my system by then. Pity. I could use a little more rest until I have to face the other storm. Of course, I owe Rebecca an explanation. It doesn't matter if the whole truth or another hastily spun tale. Although I haven't really figured out how to go about this yet. Unlike Zack and Isabella, who don't usually ask questions and are content with what little I could share, Rebecca's rather quick on the trigger. It will have to be set aside for later, though. Sup, I'm Ash from the Lux City. Baggers, watch out. Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. Huh. Sup, I'm Ash from the Lux City. The chief's name stares back at me, almost as if it's mocking me. Better not lie. Sad. I'm a cool dude. It would have been nice to just chill after last night or maybe half listen to the news. Sure, it's the same thing we've been hearing lately. Still beats standing outside in a chilly Luxburn morning on the phone with my boss. Sighing, I answer it, if only to get this over with. Ray, where are you right now? Now that's a tone I didn't expect from him at this hour. Just thinking how this will go already gives me a headache. Immediately I reach up and pinch the bridge of my nose to stave it off. This is why I won't ever drink myself senseless. What was that? Nothing, Chief. A pleasant morning to you, too. <laughs> He's probably calling to rag on me or complain about his wife, which is really none of my business unless it affects my case. It seems like the usual rich man cheats on wife deal. Although I would have followed up on it if it were somebody else's wife. But figuring it's the Chief's, hey, I trust him to come clean if the missus is related to the Wright's shady dealings. This is why I left before they even hauled the woman out last night. I'm not going to go around investigating cheating husbands and wives when it's probably just that. Chief appears to have a different idea in mind, though. There's nothing pleasant in the morning. <laughs> anyway, where are you? I told you millions of times before to keep your lines open. He did, and not only him. Zack, Rebecca, Isabella, all of them have said the same thing numerous times in the past. But I was undercover last night. A phone call is the last thing I want to happen when there are others, other things I need to focus on at the time. Besides, we have radios and work-issued phones. Why isn't he using those channels if this is urgent? Just woke up, sir. As awesome as it is to hear your voice this morning, it really is early. I feel like Ash's phone is the first one to be, like, scratched and stuff. Did you notice that? I did notice that it was scratched. If you could give me a few minutes just to wake myself up, that'd be swell. No need for that. This won't take long. Is something wrong? Am I needed at the precinct ASAP? Oh no, everything's good over there. Just... Look, kid. Pray. Don't take this personally, alright? He's taking him off the case. You're off the Luxbourne firm case. It's done today. Well, I did not expect to hear that either. Well, I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This must be some kind of cosmic joke. I allow some awkward seconds to pass. Chief must be pulling another one of his awful pranks. Out of his bad mood or a severe hangover, maybe? Everyone knows that when given the chance, he exercises no control with his drinking. If it wasn't for his wife causing a stir, he'd probably be trashed an hour in at the party. He likely drank more after they threw her out of the ballroom. Besides, his sense of humor has never been good. It's just infuriating most of the time. But when he doesn't follow up, if I sound a tiny bit frustrated speaking to my own superior, I'm not the one to blame. Wait, no. What? Are you kidding, Chief? Is this one of your practical jokes again? The temps won't say anything about it, but I... It's not that. The orders. From the higher-ups. Ah, uh, the higher-ups. Yes, my favorite word. Since when did the higher-ups ever cared about what the criminal investigation department did? 
As far as I could tell, they don't give a hoot if CID is filled with cold cases as long as we keep the spending low. When I need to view those old case files, though, they're locked away in the archives. You're going to have to check with the higher-ups. I need access to those reports. See if the higher-ups would allow it. Every step, every move in this case, there isn't one that hasn't been gated by some authority. If it's not the chief, it's the commissioner, or so they always tell me. It makes one wonder why they even bothered assigning it to anyone. Not a single one of them has done anything to help move the case. And they wonder why it has taken this long for even a hint of progress to show? You can't just drop this on me. You can't just take me off like that. Yes, I can. And I'm sorry, Ashton. You're a good detective. One of the best I've seen in years, but... Three years, Chief. Three years! Three years since that anonymous tech leak blew up. Since Luke Wright's name was openly linked to several nasty dealings within Luxburn's corporate world, some of them involving deaths. Three years! And I was the only one who made it this far, made much progress that officers with more experience weren't able to do when they handled this case. Just within a year, and with barely any help from the damn brass at that. Of course I'll be pissed. Do you know what would have happened if I didn't work my ass off on this thing? If I didn't dedicate a whole year of my time on it? It would have gone cold, like every fucking case Luke Wright has been linked to. I saved this from getting thrown into the archives, sir. I'm getting close. If you could just... I'm fully aware of what you've done, Frey. But the Commissioner hasn't been happy with your progress. Still too slow by their standards. Too slow? Well, what about those reports I filed? I've documented every freaking thing for them. I've given you every important lead I can gather. Isn't that enough? They need results, not a bunch of research papers. Not one baseless assumption after another. Concrete proof, Frey. I'm really sorry. They've already made a decision. They're going to pass this on to someone who's been in the force longer. Someone who has more experience. Someone who has more experience? They meant nothing by it, but you're still too young to work on a case this big. Chief, I've already done more than what those old farts ever did behind their desks. All of it, within just a year of being assigned to this. Watch your language, Frey. Those are your superiors, your- I'm not some damn rookie fresh out of training! I'm as qualified as they are! Futile, I know it is. They'd never say it within my earshot, but from the very minute I stepped into their precinct, the lot of them have underestimated me. From their stares alone to the assignments I get. To them, I'm still just a kid. Too young, too green, too inexperienced. And once they pull that card on me, every argument I have gets thrown out the window. No matter how logical it is, how much I've accomplished, what the record says, or the amount of work I've put in every investigation they've thrown my way. We're all aware of your skills, kid. You wouldn't have that badge and rank if you weren't good enough. However, this case is just... not for you. Too high profile, too risky to put a good officer like you in arm's way. Can he even hear himself? That reasoning is odd in itself. No one joins this line of work without knowing the dangers of it. Don't I get a second chance? You said it yourself. I'm a good detective. It'll just be a matter of time before we can close this. It doesn't matter what I think, Frey. You're off the case, and that's final. I expect all related files and documents on my desk by Monday morning. And don't even try to go touch anything. I know how hard-headed and determined you are. Chief, please. A few more weeks. I'll have the proper evidence left on your desk by then. I swear it won't take longer than that. Isn't this the day that they show up at Zach's, saying they're going to go do stuff? Friday's too late, boy. I've already informed the other officers. Why she? 29th? Either okay. today or tomorrow. You aren't to be allowed access until you've been given a new assignment. How? Oh. Help just keep out of the precinct, Fray. Take the weekend off. Seriously, Chief, is this about last night? If this is about me being at that party, I have a good reason for- You're at the party. Hmm. Huh. It makes me pause. His wary tone, then the sudden careful note in his voice. Slowly, a frown forms in my face, my eyebrows knitting together in confusion. Much as I hate to say this about my own boss, there's also suspicion in it. Hard not to think of it that way, seeing how he acted around Hannah Wright last night. Is he worried? Why should he be? Everyone who's anyone was invited. I didn't doubt for a second why he received an invite, even if his presence was questionable. 
there's something wrong and I've unintentionally walked into it. All I have is this sneaking suspicion, but when one looks at this from a different angle, put everything together, why the hell I've been taken off the case might be for the same reason he was there in the first place. Fuck. Yes, Chief. I was. For a good reason. A friend invited me to go with her. What were you doing there? I know we don't have a strict rule against attending functions, but that was... He coughs, and it almost sounds like he's choking on his own excuses? Lie? <coughs> I don't want to accuse him of anything, yet. He's someone I've respected since I joined LPD, even with his bizarre sense of humor and tendency to procrastinate. He's obviously competent enough to get the job done. He wouldn't be Chief Inspector of Luxborn Police if he wasn't. He wouldn't last years in service without some track record behind him. Whatever. <laughs> Unless that too is a fluke, and what's backing him is not something... but someone. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking shit! Chief Harvey, about last night with Harvey. Hmm. Why does it matter, Fry? This isn't about that. Why does it matter? Why does it matter? I'll recite the whole damn oath we've taken upon being sworn into service if I can, but at this point it seems too late to remind him of that. He has probably already moved from serving and protecting the people to serving and protecting his own interests. Damn it. I've suspected the upper brass of this, even the lower ranked subordinates in the force, but for my own boss? Shit. No wonder that leak didn't lead anywhere. Someone closer might have been pulling the strings. I might have been set up to fail long before the fucking case had been assigned to me. But I don't want to just give this up. I don't want to believe I've wasted an entire year for this. I don't want this to be the kind of news to tell Professor Clark, after all those promises I've given the man. I just want to know, sir, at the party, with Luke and Hannah Wright, you were... Monday, Detective Inspector. First thing in the morning. Every copy of the files you have, I want to see it all on my table, understood? This isn't... Frey, am I understood? What else can I do other than smile and nod? With my own superior expecting an answer, using that tone, brushing my questions off as easy as a discarding a dead body. Yes. Yes, sir. He cuts the line as soon as the words are out. You're off the case, Frey. Just like that. Funny why this still caught me off guard. I've discovered years ago how different the actual thing is. How far from reality everything I've believed in as a dreamy-eyed child. What? Kid. <laughs> there are no high-speed pursuits every day, no thrilling gunfights or exciting cases every step of the way. Only paperwork, lots of red tape, and dealing with the politics and bureaucracy. I've set out to change things, hoping it'll make things better for the people I care about. It ended up changing me instead. Serves me right for being too idealistic, I guess. This is probably the universe telling me that it's better to remain the skeptic I really am. Now here I am, standing useless. Can't even do anything but grip my teeth and kick the wall. The... The bastard didn't even acknowledge my response. What did the poor wall ever do to you? <laughs> it figures Rebecca would be the one to find me in this embarrassing state. Honestly, I don't like it when she sees me like this, which seems to happen a lot regardless of what I want. Rebecca, now's not a good time. The concern I expect from her when I turn isn't there, however. Instead, she just looks, well, the storm I left brewing last night, it's right there on her face, ready to be unleashed. When is it ever a good time for you? You're always so busy with, with everything now. Now I find you here. Sneaking out without even bothering with a proper goodbye. Not even a word. Really, I'm starting to think you're just keeping me around for my couch and my cooking. Becca, it's not what you're thinking. I wasn't planning on sneaking out. I was going to say goodbye. I just had to take this call. Although, I'm not going to lie. Couch is great. 10 out of 10. Would <laughs> sleep again. <laughs> Stop it with the jokes, Ashton. I'm not in the mood. Her bitterness is not lost on me. But at this point, our friendship in our lives, how does she still expect me to answer that? What am I supposed to tell her now? Are you still mad about last night? She merely raises an eyebrow at me, which, to be honest, is all the response I need. Seeing her like this makes me believe those things Z-Man says. The part where Rebecca scares him, sometimes. 
I've certainly seen this more than once already. But the familiarity <laughs> but the familiarity of it doesn't really take away from the downhill turn this conversation's starting to take. <clears throat> Only an awkward cough serves as a way to stall. Okay, of course you're still mad. <laughs> but whatever happened last night, I really am sorry. I'll apologize as many times as you want. If you want, I'd even kneel or something. Ashton, an apology is nice and all, but that's not what I wanted to hear from you today. All right, fine, okay. Where do you want to start? Oh, I don't know. I've honestly lost track of it by your third trip to the buffet table. I wasn't... <sighs> the drive up there took a bit. Can you blame me if I wanted to grab some appetizers? Oh, come on, Ash. For the whole evening? For the whole party? Please don't tell me that's all you did, because I've never known you as someone who pigs out. You even took great lengths to avoid me. Should I also mention how you ignored Zack? Sometimes I get the feeling you don't want to be seen with us in public. Some friendship, huh? You know it's not like that. It's never going to be like that, Becca. I was... Maybe you even just used me to get into the party. Mm. You said yes to being my plus one, but you were rather excited to just peel yourself off, weren't you? Honestly, I'm feeling a bit used. I couldn't even look her in the eye. It wasn't that I lied to her. I honestly wanted to be there. To keep Zack safe, to keep Rebecca safe. Just in case. Client or family friend, it was still a party hosted by a person of interest, by a man accused years ago of murdering a person's wife to get what he wanted. Oh no, the professor! But then Chief showed up, Hannah Wright happened, and Luke Wright just couldn't be bothered to die peacefully somewhere. All of a sudden, none of my original reasons mattered. If I was found out right then and there, hell, if Zack and Rebecca's connection with me was found out, who knows what might have happened. But Rebecca doesn't understand that, doesn't understand what I can and can't say to keep them from harm. It's all in her eyes, in the tight line of her lips and her furrowed brows. The hurt. I'll ask this again. Just what were you up to during the party? What were you doing that you couldn't even take two seconds to make time for your friends? This day is just off to a wonderful start. First my case, now Becca. How do I even go about this? Uh, mm. So this. I'm a little confused on the phrasing. Because, like, insisting it's confidential, is he just going to, like, be totally dismissive or be like, I'm working on a case and I can't talk about it? You know, because there's two different ways to mm -hmm. go about that. And stretching the truth, does that mean he'll say, I'm working on a case? <laughs> what? Or does that look. just like... I'm going to look and see what happens today uh -huh. a second. Yeah, yeah, we got fired. Woo. Oh, uh, they're going to get... He and Isabella are... Because he's been fired now, he's going to go with Isabella. It's like, yeah, we're going to go look into this stuff now. Um, asked for a break. Okay. So Rebecca dies tomorrow, not yeah. today. Okay. I'm tempted to go with the one on the bottom. Just because I'm hoping he'd be like, I'm working on a case and mm -hmm. I can't tell you yeah. about it. Yeah. Because I'm worried. Yeah, I, I feel like saying stretching the truth is going to mean that he's he's going to like he's dodge going around to, it. Yeah. Versus saying it's confidential. Neither one is good. I mean, she's not going to be happy with either answer because I mean, but for different reasons. She's, I feel like she'll be unhappy with the first one because she'll know he's obviously lying. And if he says the second one, she'll be unhappy because she was in fact just use for him to get into the party then. Right. The wording is the only thing that bothers me because stretching the truth sounds like a nicer way to say lie. But mm -hmm. like insist it's confidential. I feel like he's going to like start yelling, you know, an argument. Yeah. And so. I'm... I would agree with the bottom one because. Yeah, I'm worried about how he'll say it. Yeah. Because all of the characters so far in this <laughs> game have always gone about carrying out our choices in like the worst possible way they could go about carrying them out. Right. Yeah. Bottom one you think? Sure. Okay. 
insist it's confidential. It's confidential, Rebecca. <laughs> that was easy, I yeah. guess. Huh. <laughs> I wonder how many times I've told her that. And not just her. My mom, my dad, Zach, and, and even Isabella. How many times have I told them what essentially boiled down to mind your own business, to make sure they're all safe, to keep them out of danger? My job isn't a game. It isn't as glamorous as the television portrays it to be. I had thought so, too, as a child. I was so clueless back then, wasn't I? But boy, did I learn. The good guys don't always win. Justice isn't always served. Investigation is not looking at a crime scene once to get a eureka moment. It's sleepless nights at the crime lab with the tech guys. It's several days wearing the same clothes with Chinese takeout stains because I'm staking out a place. It's frustration when bureaucracy hinders you from looking into a case any farther, or when you know the suspect is guilty, but they get away scot-free on a technicality. It's seeing anger and pain and despair with every case. I know you have a mountain of questions, but I've told you this so many times before. I can't say much more than that. Still, the look on Rebecca's face, the resentment and the pain, it hurts me as well to think that I'm the cause of that. It's a familiar one, too. Something I've seen a lot over the years. I wonder how long it'll take before Zach starts giving me the same one. Or until I've hurt Reb Isabella in a way that any sincere apology won't ever be enough. What a mess. I'm a mess, and it's the people close to me who have to suffer for it. Official police business, huh? So you did use me? Yeah. Used. The way she utters it makes me feel like a total scumbag. It's not like I did it all on purpose. But I can't just hold someone else responsible for this, right? Who am I going to blame? The chief? Hannah Wright? Luke Wright? Doing so feels so cowardice. Feels it, like cowardice. I know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> I keep putting my own words in there. <laughs> it doesn't change the fact that I'm the one who put us in this situation. I couldn't even look at her anymore with this guilt eating me up inside. <laughs> But then she laughs, half-hearted with barely a hint of cheer in it, but it's a laugh nevertheless. I honestly don't know what to make of that, what to do with myself upon hearing it. It's almost like the mere sound of it is meant to pierce. Well, the least you could have done is tell me. Maybe I could have helped, kept an ear and an eye out for you. I don't know. I could have been Irene Adler, maybe? <laughs> Her smile doesn't quite reach her eyes, but the mask, she tries so hard for me. I give her a smile of my own, though I imagine it comes off as unenthusiastic as hers. It's far easier to slip back to banter when it's like this, to just brush off everything. At least this way, we wouldn't have to deal with awful things. The woman? Don't flatter yourself. No. Nancy Blue, more like. Oh, no. <laughs> you say you're sorry and you hug her. Her sidekick would beg to differ, Ashet. <sighs> I couldn't stop a wry grin from forming in my lips. She probably still has the photo from that contest, keeps it in her old diary. I never did finish either of the two after I threatened to burn them. In the end, I just never brought it up again, hoping she'd forget about the whole thing. But the small file, the small smile on her face says a lot. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a file out. <laughs> the small file on her mace. Mace. Those. Those were good times. A lot simpler, a lot more peaceful. Now? Now things have changed. We're no longer the same people we were as kids. Growing up together doesn't mean it always has to be just the two of us in the first place. It's a dumb notion to believe in. When nothing ever remains constant, things will inevitably change through the years. In fact, it already has long ago. Not just with the people we allowed in our respective lives, but also with us, as people, as friends. It really does get complicated as we get older, doesn't it? Not everything has to be, though. Even if it's in the form of a promise, I have no idea when I'll be able to fulfill. I swear, I'll explain when it's all over. The silence afterwards brings an even heavier air between us. Something that Rebecca, thankfully, doesn't allow to linger more than necessary. I suppose you have to go now, huh? The situation's already awkward as it is. Dragging this out will only make it more, what, difficult? Messed up? As if it isn't already. Back to your case again? I don't really have to. I have no case. 
As far as the job is concerned, I have the weekend off until I have to report to Chief on Monday. Although I don't want to just throw in the towel on this, orders are orders. This isn't like the movies. I don't get to say, fuck off, throw my gun and badge at him, become some vigilante, save the day and get my job back. I'd rather get my ass thrown in jail than do any of that. But it's also not in my nature to sit still and do nothing. It'll drive me crazy if I just idle about. Besides, there's someone who has to know about this whole Luke Wright thing. Yeah, I need to go talk to Professor Clark. And there's something else I need to look into. That other matter she mentioned last night, specifically. Things even the news have been blasting out to the general populace lately. Evening, afternoon, morning, all deaths with the same modus, blamed on a single serial killer. Or is it still the case? Burned dead in the early hours of the morning today. The fire was contained in the room and no other tenants were harmed, according to Lux Bontelis. We're grasping at straws as far as these murders are concerned. In the first place, I'm not even the one heading this investigation, yet look at me treating it as if it's another high-profile case on my shoulder. How sad is that? Although all three of my friends have mentioned seeing something strange, I don't want to go into that line of thinking for now. Not yet. Not until I've exhausted every logical argument I could throw at it. To be honest, though, I don't know how to take all of this anymore. But I've already given Isabella my word. It'd bother me more if I didn't follow up on a promise I made her. And after Rebecca's claims last night, there won't be enough sarcasm in the world if what my friends have been telling me is true. I can already hear Isabella's laughter, in fact. Figures. What else can it be? It's not another case. It's something else. That issue Isabella mentioned yesterday morning. I'm sure you remember. You were there. Well, at least you're not neglecting all your friends. Becca, I promised her I'll... She doesn't wait for me to finish. With a roll of her eyes, she turns around and shuts the door in my face. I've no idea what I've said this time, but... I probably deserve that. We'll just have to fix this some other time. By then, her temper's sure to have cooled off significantly. Hopefully. <laughs>